Hello, this is Leonardo, and a lot of people has been asking me uh, to create a tutorial on how how to develop modules for Rack, but I haven't been able of doing it in, in a long time. So until today, I'm gonna try to make it quick, uh, but in, in any case, it's gonna be a long video. I tend to talk too much, but the good thing is that uh, I haven't had breakfast, so that's gonna push me. Uh, to move forward. Okay, so let's start. The first thing that you need to do is, uh, I mean, it's not necessary, but it's recommended, is that you, you need to be able of compiling Rack. In order to do that, you can follow uh, the other videos that I have made on how to compile a uh, Rack on Mac and Windows. Even if you don't need to do that, it's, it's, it's recommended because uh, those videos show you how to install the tools that you need to compile. If you don't have the tools to compile, you're not going to be able of doing anything. So, in my case, I have I have already compiled Rack. It's in development slash Rack. If I just do make, uh, everything is it's fine. It's, it's compiled. So, what we are going to do is uh, going into the page into the GitHub page of Rack. And here, we're gonna start with the template. If you haven't seen it, there is, a, there is an example project that you, can, that you can modify and create your own, your own plugin. So what we're gonna do is uh, copy in the GitHub repository address, and we're gonna, we're gonna enter into the plugins directory. And we're going to clone it here. OK, it's cloned. Let's center into the project. And let's edit it. I use Visual Studio Code because it has lots of features that I like. And, but let me just do something quick because I like my my code to be automatically formatted, but the default does a little bit of mess, in my opinion. And I have my settings. This this step doesn't matter for you. Okay, so I have cloned the repository. It's inside plugins template. And if I just do make dash j4, in this case, it's gonna run the compiler in, in parallel for processes. And we can see that there are no errors. It compiled correctly. And then I can install it. So run by running make install. What it does is that it compiles and it prepares everything that you need to, be, to distribute. And it actually copies uh, your plugin into the correct location. So when you open Rack, you have a <coughs> you have the module that we compiled. So we just compiled this one called my module, which is the, uh, the example. And it's a, it's a sign generator. That is just like this. Uh, let's listen to it. Copy is not. Let me add a mixer just to control the volume. Okay, you should be able to listen to it. Uh, okay, so let's take a quick look at the code. Uh, in Rack, the, the code is organized in the following way usually have a resource folder where you can put your your graphic files like your panel and custom knobs and everything everything that is graphic then you have the source code and the other important thing is your make file so what we are gonna do is uh, start uh, customizing uh, our module and it's gonna be um, so the things that, that we need to change or we need to define is, is our, our slug. 
which is the let's let's call it like the the name that you want to use for all your modules for uh, all these modules in all the modules compiled in this project so later uh, before i was thinking how should i call it so i decided to call it chicken this is going to be my plugin uh, not, not my module but my slug for all the modules so they are going to show in this category called chicken and yeah we change the slug and then we have to set a version and you can follow uh, these two links in order to, to define uh, what what's going to be your version but it's basically this plugin is going to be compatible with version 0.6 of rack uh, with any uh, with any 0.6 so it can be one two three four or as many as as many versions as they are released and if we compile inside the plugin directory we don't need to do anything else the build system is going to work the next thing that we are going to do uh, let's take a, a quick look at, at this this code so we have in the template.h uh, we are creating a, a plugin and we are creating a module so if you for each module you need to create one of these you need to declare one of these and uh, and yeah you can name it as as, as you wish in template.cpp what we do is initialize the plugin so what happens is that it uh, gets creates a new plugin for your modules and then sets the version the slug and then adds your module if you don't add the module uh, it's not going to show up and in a separate file we have the module itself which consists on different sections this is the, the declaration of the module where it sets which parameters is using which inputs which outputs if it uses slides these are auxiliary variables of the of the module this is our initialization and here we have the actual dsp code which is from every sample and this my module there, there is there is one special thing so this my module is it's the is the dsp code uh, and it does not uh, and it separates what's dsp code and what is the graphics in the graphics side we have uh, the widget the module widget which receives our dsp code and creates uh, the panel and the controls so what's doing here is, is setting uh, the panel for loading the panel of for module from the SVG file, then adds four screws, and then adds parameters. So we have only one parameter. If you remember, there was one knob to control the pitch, and we have to define what kind of, of knob it is, the position, uh, to which parameter is associated, and the minimum, maximum, and the initial value. Then we add an input of this type, the same position, uh, direction, which is an input, and to which input identifier is associated. So uh, the same with the output, type, position, direction, and identifier. And lastly, we have the, the light. Okay, so the next important part is this, in which uh, the module is created. So it, uh, this thing creates a relationship between the DSP code and the graphic part, and then it defines the slug, which should be the same as the one that we set here. And name of uh, short name of the module and the display name of the module, and then some uh, tags in order to make to classify it. So the first thing that I'm going to change, I change my slug to chicken so now it's not template anymore and it's going to be chicken like that my module i'm actually gonna call it as well chicken chicken and the short the display name is going to be chicken that's it and i'm going to change the svg file it's going to be called chicken my my panel Mm, 
what else do I need to change? Uh, well, I'm going to change the, the structure name. It's not going to be called my module anymore. So I'm going to select all the occurrences of my module. And everything is going to be called chicken. A model chicken is declared here. Let's, this has changed. It's not my module. It's model chicken. And here we are going to add model chicken. So, if I did everything correctly, this should compile without problems and should install. When I open, <coughs> rack, uh, there should be an, a new module. This is the old one, the old template. I'm going to delete it and there should be one called chicken. And yeah, we have it. It's working. So, the first... Okay, what, what we're going to do next? What we're, uh, now that we have our module, we have we can compile it. What we're gonna do is start designing our module. And okay, be before that, let's let me just give you an example that I show in in the other in the other video. Let's modify the the code. In this case, we have a, a sine wave generator. But what if you want to generate? A, Two sine waves, which are instead of one, we're going to generate two sine waves uh, added, but with different phase. So let's add 1.0. So this is going to uh, create two sine waves with a D phase and some. And yeah, I need to divide this by two so we get the same amplitude. If I compile this and I run it, my chicken module should be generating two sine waves. Is it? I don't know, maybe it is. Let me make another different modification. Um, What can we do that is okay? Let's let's change the frequency. It's gonna generate two two sine waves, and in order to change the frequency, let's say that it's twice as faster. We're gonna multiply by two point zero f, and that's it. Okay, it recompiled, it installed, and now we have. Uh, two sine waves and let's listen to it Whoa. these are two sine waves <coughs> and I don't know if you know the story but uh, the boost modules were born because uh, I've been working for quite a long time in, in a compiler in a, in a programming language which the intention for me was to to create like this uh, layer on top of C++ that allowed me to be uh, more productive. So I created this very simple very, this very simple language that generates uh, different uh, types of, of code. It can be C++, JavaScript, and and that way it. I don't have to, to care about the details of, of C++ and I can just focus on, on the functionality. This is the web page of, of, of the compiler, which is called Vult. And then the code that I was writing, it evolved into the Vult modules. Uh, yeah, and in this page I have... I mean, some of the advantages of the language is that uh, it can generate code with fixed point, which it is good for microcontrollers. Not, not very. It's not a big feature if you run, if you create code for, uh, for a, a computer, a desktop computer. Another feature is the functions with con with context, which I'm gonna show you as as I write the code. And I also have uh, automatic type inference and type checking, so I wanted to, the the code to be very strict and not making conversions between types and it has some other features like it creates uh, tables for 
uh, lookup tables for interpolating functions and embedding web wave files. So here is I also have a, a tutorial which I try to to describe the features little by little. And there is also the language reference. Which I'm, I'm, go I'm gonna keep open yes because I tend to remember to, to forget stuff. So in order to install it you go to the GitHub page and the release page and uh, I have binaries for the version 0 0.3 so in, in this case I'm going to use the, the latest version that I released I'm actually working on a on a new version that has lots of improvements but since it's not yet ready uh, we're going to focus on this one and later when I release the new version there are going to be small changes that are very easy to, to correct but uh, let's use this one so you can install it by yourself and I use in order to program this I use a, a programming language called OCaml which is mm, like my favorite programming language uh, but it can be challenging if, if you just want to, to use it so I recommend you just to get the binaries for your for your platform and it's a very very small program so I'm gonna get the binaries for OS X and yeah it's here I'm gonna do the, the lazy lazy way I'm just gonna instead of installing it I'm just gonna copy it into uh, here template I'm gonna put it here I'm gonna put the whole compiler in the source code this is not a good practice but it's good enough for for this purpose so uh, you have a vultc executable which is a compiler and you also have these two files the vultin uh, code which is just uh, some aux auxiliary functions uh, that, that are used by the generated code so I put it in the same place as, as the code and in order to compile this is a .c file so I need to make a small change to the make file uh, I need to add another case so it adds the .c files as well to the compilation I actually can rename as well the this file to .cpp there shouldn't be any problem uh, but I'm gonna keep it like this so I'm gonna make clean just to be sure that the, the compilation is triggered and I'm gonna make install again so we can see here that is 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 compiling the 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 built-in code so we can start using the boot language uh, so the way it works I'm gonna create a, a new file. It's gonna be called chicken dot and I'm gonna make a dummy function. I'm gonna call it process, and I'm just gonna put some code here so it generates some of the a common structure. So this is my build code. And I want to generate C++ code out of it. So in order to do that, I have to run the the build compiler uh, with the argument dash C code because we want to generate C code. We are gonna give the main uh, or main uh, build file. So your product can be split into multiple files, but you you need to do you need to give the to provide the the top the top file and the compile if, if there are other files the compiler is going to try to find them and and use them and so and we are going to output all this all the c code into a single file which is going to be called chicken let me just be sure that i'm gonna i'm not uh, overwriting okay so it's safe it's going to be chicken and my output is the file chicken.cpp and chicken.h which are the automatically generated files 
and uh, I'm gonna rename this. This is gonna be the chicken module. So I just need to make clean um, compile and install. Okay. Um, so let's take a quick look at generated source code. And yeah, it generates lots of stuff and the code, it's still readable, but I mean, not, not easy. The important, the important parts are that uh, I have a function called process, which is gonna be chicken uh, dot process. And for that function, we generate a, a type. Okay. This is a special case. If I if I don't put anything here, this is a, this is a static function. It doesn't have any context. If I generate the code, the output is gonna be just one function that does nothing. But when we add a context, which is this magic here, we generate, we get a, or process function and we get uh, some other functions as well. So for the important part is that we have a type uh, that needs to be, that is the, the context of the function. We generate an initialization and we get uh, the function itself. So let's say that I want to use, okay, let's, let's say that I, I have an input. Why? I'm gonna keep this one just for illustrative purposes. What I'm gonna do is return the sign of y. Uh, I'm gonna do the same that I'm doing on the other side. Plus the sign of two times y. Everything divided by two. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be the body of my function. Generate this thing, and if I want to use it in my module and replace this part actually this one is 2 pi let me fix fix it so we can get the same so it's 2.0 times i have a built-in function pi if i remember correctly uh, let me verify that because i have it in the latest okay yeah i do have it in the latest uh, compiler I'm, i was pretty sure that i have it but not in this version Uh, to make it more readable, let's do phase equals 2.0 times pi uh, times y, and then we use phase and phase by 2. So this is exactly the same generate the code and I want to use it. So the first thing that I have to do is creating a, a type. So in my class, in my DSP code class, I'm gonna create this, which is, I'm gonna call it processor. Okay, we have a data structure and now I have to initialize it. And I'm gonna initialize it with a this function which is chicken process in it and I need to give the processor is initialized and when I want to call it it's this one I need to I want to put it here chicken process I need to give the processor and the face and right now this may look complicated, but at the end it simplifies a lot. Uh, what, I, what I tend to do is I write everything in Vult and I just call one function here, take out the values and, and that's it. So if I did everything correctly, I should be able to compile. No, I'm not able to compile. Oh yeah, I haven't added the include. So I need to include chicken.h. Compiles, 
let's see if it works yeah it works the same way okay up to this point we have a very basic full code mm, right now we are not exp uh, like taking advantage of all the f of any of the features but it works so what I wanted to do in this example is actually create a model and uh, so this is my web page and I and I have here some of the of the projects that I have published and I have this thing I actually have two two versions I'm going to try to show in the edit of the video the the picture of the other module so I have this one which it has a Teensy board and uh, I can generate code I can generate I can so the, the code that I write in Bolt I can generate it into a different version of, of C++ which is which replaces all the floating point computations by fixed point computations and that can be run in, into into the TNC board which is this small processor here it's, a, it's an ARM processor that can go if I remember correctly up to 80 or 90 megahertz so yeah I got that processor and I and I wired all this and I have uh, four controls one uh, one analog output uh, one gate output I don't remember where this one and two switches and a button so uh, I want to create some code that is gonna be run into this thing and for that uh, let, let's try to replicate for this okay so I, I, I have my module and I want to add or remove features the first thing that we need to check is the license of this mm, I don't think okay this is public domain so we can use the code but usually uh, it's it's a good it's good to check in the the licenses this was the original code doesn't have any special license so we can use it without problems and yeah this is the creative commons so we can use this code uh, without problems and it does don't think it requires uh, attributing the original author then <clears throat> I want to modify my panel so let me open so I, I I use since I use Mac uh, Inkscape doesn't work very well and for that reason I use instead Affinity Designer which is of course quite nice so this is the chicken panel and I want to customize it so let's add some text here chicken and to make it stand out let's use the comic sans which which is the font that they say that you should not use it but let's use it and then I have this background and I want it to be like more the chicken color which for me it's like that and so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a, a copy of this panel I'm just gonna place it in the same place so this is my affinity designer file and I'm gonna export the new version and I have a, a preset for PCB rack which uh, basically uh, defines these settings um, that makes it compatible with this VRAC actually you can this information is here this is a uh, this is Jeremy's uh, wiki you can find it in in the Jeremy Jeremy's modules and in the wikis you can find lots of information which is useful for for the for creating uh, modules 
So for example, uh, here's a link for my videos to install, uh, hack on Windows and Mac, like recommendation for the sizes, actually not recommendation, this is the, the, the sizes that, that you should use if you want to, to make your module Euro rack compatible. Uh, how to export SVGs, you can find uh, this information here. Yeah, there is a lot of information, so I really recommend you to, to go through all this. If, if you have any doubts uh, about this video that I'm doing, first go to this page, and then and then uh, yeah, you can ask me a question, in, and if I have and if I, if I have the answer, I, I will uh, write you back. Okay, so I'm going to export my new panel, new and improved panel. Uh, chicken SVG, yes, replace it. Yeah, let's install it. And we have my new improved module. So, yeah, so what I wanted to do it was to create something like this and then write some code for it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I, I need the module to be wider because, because uh, if you can see this has two rows and it has uh, four, four knobs. And one thing uh, that, I mean, developers and, and also I, I'm part of, of that, I'm, I'm guilty as well, is that we design modules that are that in reality are not ergonomical. So uh, let's say is like we tend to put lots of mod, uh, of controls next to each other that if, if that will be a really euro rack model that will be very difficult to to use because uh, there's no space for the fingers so yeah let's make it wider it needs to be in uh, i think is 15 like multiples of 15 to so each HP is 15 uh, so I'm gonna add if I add one if I set 120 it's gonna be yeah compatible with that <coughs> so my document is 120 And how do I know that it's 120? Okay, there it is. It still, still looks a little bit, I can add a little bit more. So let's go to 150. Oops, this is strange. Okay, never mind, I'm gonna create a new one. 150 by 380. Ah, okay, now it looks correct. I'm gonna copy my panel, my panel color. Uh, the name of my module. Actually, I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna move it. And this one thing that, that I do is uh, uh, let's export the test. Oh, okay, so export it as I'm gonna save it as chicken and I'm gonna export it as uh, chicken.svg. Uh, one thing that so that is new in fact that the is that the size of the module in this case is is picked directly from the size of the of the SVG file. So it seems like I don't need to <clears throat> to set it manually. If I, if the SVG size is correct, it's, that's when, that's the size that it's gonna take. So install. Yeah, and this is my new expanded module. With no labels. So what I what I want to do now is uh, add some knobs. 
in one thing that I found is that is very convenient is creating two layers one from for the panel and one for the controls so these two things that are part of my panel I'm gonna move them inside and, and I have another layer for controls now let's since I in this case I don't want to create uh, custom uh, controls I want to use the ones that that are available available in rack I want to take a look at the code first and one thing that you should always do is check licenses so here it says so all the source code is, uh, is under BSD license so uh, since I'm not using the code right now uh, I'm not gonna pay much attention to this one but basically I can redistribute the code modify it uh, but I need to keep the original author the copyright of the original author so you, you cannot say like I wrote VCV rack no you you didn't it's, you need to uh, and there is a requirement that your source your source code needs to uh, point and keep uh, the licensing information okay you can uh, compile and and distribute distribute it and and this is important you cannot use you cannot build VCB rack distribute it and say that it, it's VCB rack uh, I mean it's, it's kind of common sense you cannot say that you wrote the code uh, you if you make modifications uh, you need to specify that other person wrote the original code you made modifications and you cannot distribute it uh, say that saying that uh, uh, this great program this great modification that I did it's approved by the original author so I mean, I'm not a lawyer just be careful with the licenses and be respectful of other people's work okay that's for the source what about the component library graphics so there are a lot of graphics in 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 this folder and they have a creative common license uh, but it, it's specified here that you cannot use them in commercial uh, projects so if uh, you can so the, I guess that, that means that you can use it in open source projects and I guess that you need to keep license information uh, but if you make a commercial plugin you cannot just take these graphics and use it and, and use them in your project you need to uh, you need to request a commercial license okay core panels and graphics which are included in core uh, have copyright and you may not uh, create derivative works so you cannot open these files modify them and and save them so if you want to make something similar you need to start from the scratch you need to create your own panel from the scratch which is kind of what i did i created a new project I added my text and this is my this is my my file in yeah VCV logo and the icon they have copyright so you cannot use them in your own projects you cannot say that you are VCV rack and also the VCV name is a trademark so you cannot say uh, it, it can be used by only by official products uh, but for example uh, say that it's acceptable to use for VCV rack so if in my my plugin cannot be called VCV chicken because it doesn't have anything to do with VCV rack VCV uh, didn't create it, that that module but it's fine to say like chicken for VCV rack yeah so just try to check the license information in, in the in every code that you get from github or from anywhere in the internet and if you have doubts about it is or there are no license information it's nice to to contact the original author 
Okay, so what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to use the component uh, on the component library and this plugin is not commercial so it seems that, like I can use them. Uh, no, no, plugins, it's in resources, component library. And there are all these uh, files. So what I'm going to do, uh, I mean just for to simplify my my design I'm gonna take some of these there's let me I don't remember which ones are the ones that I like the most so I, I need some knobs yes Okay, I need some jacks as well. So no, what is the one that I like? Scrolling, scrolling, trying to find it. Oh, this one is nice. The Syntec Al Alco. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it so I get the, the size. And this control is gonna be in my control layer. So this is nice because I can turn it off and turn it on while I'm designing my panel. And I need uh, four of them. Then I also need uh, some inputs. I think the jacks. I don't remember their names. Because uh, in the boot modules I have I have my own. Those are the ones that I use. Oh, this one. So my module looks a little bit like this. Uh, like that. So I'm gonna put them in the coordinates in pixels. Let's see if I can change all of them at the same time. Yeah, I can. One forty. Hundred and six and two seven two. Yeah, usually making the panel is the most time consuming part for me. Okay, I have I mean, they are not perfectly aligned or anything, but it doesn't look that bad from the distance. And let's add some labels. So what am I going to do with this? Mm. Yeah, I'm going to do something simple like uh, some sample and hold and random 
random generation. That's that's quite simple. So let's take a clock. Let's call it clock. And what else? Some modulation that is going to modulate something. I don't know what. Okay, in order to avoid making this, you can lock this thing so I cannot drag the background anymore. Uh, the name, I'm going to lock it as well. I don't want to be dragged or select. My, this is my modulation one. And I'm going to add a modulation tool that is going to modulate something. I don't know what. And this is going to be my output. And yeah, let's follow the convention. Oh, I put all this in the controls. I'm going to cut it from here. They are going to go into the panel like that, and as part of the panel, do it this. Okay, multi-handed text. Let's change the color to like a darkish chicken. Uh, okay. Isn't it the previous panel that you that you have ever seen? Let's disable the controls and export it. So right now the source code doesn't match. I don't have exactly the same controls, but we can see that we have the new panel. And I'm running track in low resolution because I found that if I in high resolution it tends to look quite nice, but when I run my models in other uh, computers without high resolution screen, it doesn't look as, as nice as this. Okay, so mm, let's modify this code by adding new parameters. I want to remove most of the code like the code in step, it's gone. Uh, I'm gonna keep those as reference. I don't need these variables. And my parameters, I added, where is it? Four nodes that I just named, node one, two, three, and four. So not one para then two, three, four. We have declared four parameters. Inputs. I decided I decide to get a clock, modulation one, modulation two. So it's gonna be three inputs. Clock input. Mod one input mod to input and I have only one output we can extend it later if we want mm. so output 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 I'm just gonna call it output that's fine and I have my processor which I want to keep using the bool code I want to keep writing the, the DSP bool then load the panel Add the screws and add the controls. So then the knob that I wanted to use is different. I forgot the name. Okay, let's change first this one. I want the X, and if I remember correctly, the name of this of the jacks that I want is called this thing. It's called like that. Let's we will find out. So I'm going to add the inputs. I'm going to comment out this. And I don't have a light. So I have three inputs. 
one output and this is going to be clock input the next is going to be mod one input mod two input this is going to be output now uh, i need to set the locations i saw that uh, andrew made uh, like some simple way of, of making the the panels which it gen automatically generates code but I, I haven't I haven't used it yet so I'm gonna go with the traditional way this is in 87 67 so all all of my oh no, um, that was enough uh, all of them fix this 140 all of them are at 21 21 and the first one it's at 75 140 206 and the output is at 272 So this is not doing anything now. I'm gonna compile, compile. And I'm gonna run rack. And yeah, okay, this is strange. Did I set the location incorrectly? Seventy-five, one hundred and Okay, now they are in the correct location. The module is not doing anything. Let's uh, add the nodes, which I forgot. What was the name? I think it was this one. Syntec Alco. So, See if it compiles. If it compiles, that's a name. Yes, it com well almost compiled. This is not one, and I wanted to go from zero to one. I started in starting in zero point five. Okay, fine. Just wanna copy this two, three, four locations. All of them in 87 in X 67 132 198 oh, I don't have I'm getting old in my memory cannot store three numbers in my mind 132 198 The last one, two, six, four. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm recording 54 minutes. Let's try to speed up. Okay, yeah. well, it's different, but it doesn't matter. I like these notes. <laughs> I don't know why. They are different, but it doesn't matter. This is my module, my chicken module. And so next step, let's write the DSP code. So I said that it's gonna, it's gonna, that's gonna be some kind of sample and hold. And let's go step by step. 
I'm gonna write this in bold. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna input the input, then the mod one and the mod two. That's it. And I'm gonna return is actually I call this clock. This is a clock. And I'm gonna return uh, just for testing right now some random signal. So if I generate this code, okay. So this is some of the error messages that you have input. Uh, yeah, what it's trying to say is that doesn't know what kind of variable it is. Uh, therefore, let's put a temporarily some type annotation. All of these are real values. So it lets me compile. Yeah, there it is. And error, chicken process type does not exist. Oh yeah, I need to put something. So I'm gonna create knob one, then I'm just gonna create some X. Later I will fix, oops. Cannot infer the type, the same problem. Now everything is fine. And, oh, of course I'm not calling. So it takes clock, mod, mod 1, mod 2, and returns the output. So this is going to be my step. Uh, chicken process. I'm going to call it with the processor. Float uh, clock is equals to inputs. Clock input dot value, I think it's like that. And I'm actually gonna normalize the input to a range. So 10 volts is gonna become one volt. And everything is gonna be normalized uh, like that. Then we have mod one input, mod two input, this is mod one. Moth 2, clock, mod 1. In this function, uh, returns 1. Since it's only one value, it returns only one value, I'm going to This is the output, which is only one value. So you can return multiple values in Vault and it generates automatically some data structures. And this is different in, in the newer version of Vault, but uh, it doesn't matter. Outputs, output dot value is equal to whatever out is multiply by 10 because I'm going to return values in the range of 0 to 1 or no, minus 1 to 1 and that's it, this should compile we have noise okay so next thing everything is set up this side in the C++ code and we can focus only on writing Vult code so the first thing that I'm gonna do I'm gonna uh, create something that detects the edge of a clock so I'm gonna create a function called edge that is gonna take some value which is uh, my clock. And, what I'm, what, and the way you detect uh, the, uh, 
a trigger or a clock is that is that uh, you need to check the, what was the previous value of the input. Let's say that uh, we have false and the next input is true. That means that there was a, a rising edge and we need to return a value. In any other case, uh, we return false. So I need a way to store what was the previous value. So I'm created, I created a, a variable which is called pre. And what I'm gonna do, so the, res the result, or the, the value that I'm gonna return is gonna be if clock, I'm, I'm gonna write it like this, most readable way. I, I don't care about uh, performance now. And actually, the compiler is gonna try to optimize, so it doesn't matter. If the current clock, it's equal to true and the previous it's equal to false then true else false yeah okay we we don't need this thing so if the previous value was if the current value of the of the signal is true and the previous was false then this is going to be true, and that's the only case. We're going to return this one. And uh, we need to store the previous value. The previous value is equal, it's equal to the current value. That's it. So one thing in the full language is, since I'm comparing this variable clock against true, uh, it automatically infers that this thing, that this uh, the type of this variable is, needs to be Boolean. And since I'm returning this uh, value, which is a Boolean value, it, it determines that the value, that the return of the function is, is Boolean. So let's try to generate bool code for this and take a quick look at what's generated. Okay, I have my edge function that has a Boolean or sign int zero, which is uh, the smallest that we can generate. And the value takes a context and the uh, code takes a context, but we don't care because uh, boot takes care of, uh, of the context. So this is as easy as, mm, let's make a sample and code. If there is an edge on the clock and the clock, uh, so the, the clock signal is larger than 0 0.2 and if there is an edge on that what we are going to do we are going to we are going to we are going to say that the output is equal to uh, to mod 1 that's it this is a sample and hold as easy as this uh, we compare the clock. If the clock is larger than 0 0.5, then we have a, a Boolean signal. If there is an edge, a rising edge, then uh, the, out, uh, the output value is, is uh, latched into this register and is returned. Let's generate. Actually, no, no, we're, we're going to use random like that. So every time that there is a rising edge in the clock or every time that the clock signal goes above uh, 0 0.2 or 2 volts in the in rack, it's going to create a random number and it's going to set it there. We generate the code, we compile and let's test. So no clock, no signal. Simple clock. Okay, this is not audio. So. Yeah, we can see that it's working. And as easy as that, we can have a sample and hold. So what else can we do? Uh, we can do some slew limiting to the to the output. 
so instead of uh, changing in steps we can use one knob to change it slower mm. Mm -hmm. so how actually let's what can I do yeah let's do this this little limiter So in order to make a slip limiter, we need uh, mm -hmm. we need to have some integrator. Let's, we have a state, we have an input signal, and, uh, and we need a, a rate value. So I'm gonna say if My value y if uh, x is larger than the rate mm, I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna keep it like that I'm gonna do some toning later if the rate is large if this is larger than the rate oh, how can I do it oh okay I, I need to get the the, the 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 difference. So if the difference is equal to state minus x. So if the difference is larger than the rate, then I have to return a maximum. Otherwise, if the difference is less than minus rate, then I return minus rate. Any other case, I return the difference, and then I accumulate. Actually, I think it needs to be the opposite. It's minus state. That way, if x is possible, uh, the state is positive. So the state is equal to state plus whatever not the difference. Y and return. I think that's it. I think it's correct. So let's take this thing and the sample slew of a sample and I need a rate so I need the value of the not one I haven't set it so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create some variables not one not not two three and four and the way we're gonna pass these values is uh, with some other functions I don't want to pass it here okay. I can do it but it looks nicer this way set not one it's gonna take a value and what it's gonna do okay so important here uh, I'm, create, I'm, I'm declaring this function with and so that means in the boot language that this function have access to the context created by this process so I can access the values of, of knob, knob 1, knob 2, knob 3 and sample but these two functions uh, are separate they have their own context uh, yeah if this doesn't make much sense I'm gonna try to create another video just focusing on the language so for now I'm just writing writing the code so the value of the knob one is gonna be there is a function that is called clip in bolt that is useful uh, when creating modulations actually we don't need it here because we are pretty sure that this value should not go uh, should not go outside the limits so this is not 
2, set the value 2, not 3, set the value 3. And now in the C++ code, we need to set these values. Mm. In, in this case, you can decide how often you want to update the, the values. Uh, but right now, I'm just going to update it, update the values every sample. So let me generate the whole code. Uh, cannot be inferred. Yes. OK, since it's not used anywhere, it doesn't know that it's a, that it's a real. Actually, if we remove this type annotation, it's going to work now because here I'm comparing clock against 0 0.2, so it says uh, this should be a real value. In this case, I'm using it. I'm using not one in this function, and from here it infers that it's it's a it's a real value. But for not two, not three, and not four, it doesn't doesn't have any information. So I'm just gonna add an explicit annotation. So it lets me compile. Uh, uh, of course. You know what? I'm gonna separate them like this. Okay, compiled. So what I'm gonna do is uh, set the values. It's gonna be called chicken set knob one in my processor, and I think it's called params. I'm gonna give the value the knob one. I think it's like that. Let's. Yeah, it's correct. So let's set the values of the knobs. Knob one, knob two, knob three. That's it. Forgot what I was doing. And what did I do? Okay, so I have a value between 0 and 1, and it's passed into the slew, and then I'm calculating the difference at every sample, and if it's larger than the rate, uh, okay, but this value, is, this value is too large. Let's add some magic number for testing purposes. see any change let me maybe this value is just too should be too much smaller like that let's test that okay yeah it should just it has to be small maybe not that small I mean, the best way is calculating, calculating using the time, but yeah, I leave that to you. Okay, yeah, it works. So we can go fast, we can go slow, and I want to go faster, so Yeah, there is a big problem with this is that uh, in order to get a nice behavior, it needs to be exponential, I guess. OK, it works decent. Yeah, so we have this value. And what if? We use these two modulations. Uh, right now, I, I haven't used at all any any of the cool functions of, of the 
the full language. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually take two values and they're going to add and now you know what, let's add more, more outputs, it's more useful. So let's add one more output. So we have two outputs. I export my new panel. Mm, I need to add a new output one, output two. So the new one is 21322 and no, it's not here. It's here. Yeah, the two outputs. Let me remove the. Yeah, it's smaller for here, but I'm not, not going to care right now. And this is doing nothing. So we are going to generate two signals using the same, the same idea. So I'm going to call this sample one. I'm going to create another, which is sample two. That is out one. And I'm going to make something similar every time that there is that the clock rises. I'm going to create a, a new random number, assign it to sample two. And here's some of the cool stuff in Vult. So I created a, a function called slew that has internally a state. And if you do the same in C++ and you create a function that has some static state, that means uh, that every time you call the function, uh, the state is going to be the same state is going to be used. But full takes care of that, and every time you call the function slew, it creates a new context. So uh, the sample, the slew limiter of uh, called here is completely separate from this one, so they don't need to interfere each other, and this makes sense because. Uh, if, if you think in VCB rack, every time that you add a module, it's, let's say, a filter. Uh, the filter is, is completely separate. It has its own, its own uh, states, controls, everything. And if you want another filter, you insert it and it's separate. And here we have the same behavior. I created a function that has some behavior. And every time I call it, it creates a, a new separate instance of it. So uh, I call it twice. Every, every function is separate. I'm sampling the two values using two separate nodes and returning two values. If everything is correct, the code should compile, but here there's going to be a difference. Now, chicken process is returning two values and, and in C++ you cannot return two values so in order to do that to return two values what, what I did in, in this version of full it was to create a, a structure called a tuple which returns two values so what I have to do in order to, to take those two values out of the of the call have to do this, I create a tuple called out and I have to pass it to the function as last argument. So what's going to happen is that in this value, I'm creating this data structure, I'm calling 
the processor function and the processor function is going to give me two values uh, into this structure and if you see the declaration I have a field called 0 and field called 1 so in order to access to those two fields I need to do this so output 1 it's the value of the field 0 and output 2 is the value of the field of field 1 so that should be all it's correct and now I have two signals and I want the signal to go from uh, I want to change the scale uh, to go from minus 1 to 1 okay, so that's very simple random is I'm going to multiply it by 2 and subtract 1.0 so it's going to be the same that's it, regenerate the code, compile and it works now super slow, faster then what else can we do? we can actually it would be interesting having like a range and offset so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna control the the I'm gonna control the two signals with different knobs so this one is gonna control the slew rate uh, the next one is gonna control the range of the signal and then this one is gonna control the offset let's do that I want knob one to control the slew rate of the two then I want uh, so from the output I want to use knob 2 to control the range so the amplitude and I want knob 3 to control the offset and I want the offset to be negative as well so I need to change the range of knob 1 uh, is 3 actually I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep this like that I'm going to change it from boot so let's call offset it's the value of knob 3 and the same I need to multiply it by this goes from 0 minus 0.5 multiplied by 2 this is going to be my offset I think it's correct, let's try it regenerate the code, compile so this one defines the steel rate of the two signals this one defines the, the range or the, the amplitude so let's see no, it's doing Maybe we have some error, let's check it. So am I setting the correct values? Knob two. Oh here is the error. This is two, this is three, and this is four. That's it. It was there. So knob three defines the offset. This is offset zero. This defines the range. this defines the slew rate so let's use our chicken module uh, let's do two VCOs let's create two quantizers input 1, input 2 then
the video now so there you have it the chicken module and, uh, and I'm gonna try next next week to make another video uh, focusing more on the boot language and some some of the cool features so if you have any suggestion to add to the chicken module let me know and I'm, I can try to do it uh, yeah of course it needs to be a simple module so as you can see to make the chicken module or, or the whole DSP code of the chicken module is it's an edge detector and it's lure rate limiter and this thing that just performs the sample sample and hold. Uh, thank you for watching this and have fun. <laughs>